So by piping the incidence node to the gradient input value, we were able to control the same end of the spectrums using these two colors. Of course, we can add our own color if you want. You can have this white, black, white, and black. Now, combining these two nodes together, you're able to produce any kind of effect that you want. Anything that depends on a surface or camera relationship or a surface and lights relationship. If we do something like this, for instance, bring it back to black and white, and have this black. Let's give it a color. this node, bring this node in, and we can start having our own 2D shading nodes, basically. So let's go back to black and white and change the incidence back to surface and camera. Now, we want to control the reflection amount based on an angle. So the first thing to do is we need to pipe this gradient to the reflection color because this reflection color or mixed color it tells Mentory where does the reflection happen. So if you pipe this here to the reflectivity, and let's have a look first at this want to have the edges more reflective. We'll give it a 0.6 as an overall and we'll have a 0.2. And let's change the curve. How these happen from here to here. Okay, that looks about right. Let's do a test render. See how this looks. Okay, so this is starting to take shape. We have our colors reflected. We have a Fresnel effect already in place. Now let's try to solve this problem where the reflection is still happening everywhere. And that's because we're not using the grid anymore on the reflectivity port from here. So we need to introduce this again. But right now, our gradient is occupying the reflectivity port. So the way to solve this is to use a mixer. We need to mix these two nodes and bring something from them. Okay, we want the grid to be our base color. We'll take this down to black and we'll take the bump map out just to see the effects. Okay, so our reflections right now are only happening on the blue tiles, but how do we bring the incidence back in? If we pipe the gradients inside the color one nodes, in our preview sphere here, nothing has changed. That's because right now the blending is mixed, and if you put it to screen, that's not going to help either. 
what we need to do we need to have this area toned down based on angle and this edges appear more prominently without affecting or adding its own color to the mix the way to do this is using a multiply node or blending node if we increase this now we can clearly see that our canvas are not reflecting and our blue tiles are still reflecting but they're being controlled through the gradient so the multiplier right now is acting like an alpha slider to the grid let's do test render let's turn the bump mapping on and we'll see if we can produce better bumps then we get through the texture here the problem with the current bumping method is that the effect is weak and it's not we don't have a lot of control except for factor Softimage 2011 introduced a new bump node called bump map the way to use this node is to plug this inside the architectural materials or overall bump we'll take the grid remove the bumping from it and we'll take a black and white grid and I have this connect inside the inputs port so let's start by doing a test render and compare it to the old one Well, nothing happened, our bump is gone. That's because we need to go inside the architectural material, additional options. Instead of using the old bump inputs, which is driven from a texture, we need to change it to use wall space or object space. We'll use object space for now. This clearly is much better than using the bump factor from the node itself. Plus we have more control now, controlling the scale and the spacing of the bumps. Right, so now we'll look at how to produce those glossy reflections again. To produce a glossy reflection we will have to have the glossy reflection appear on the Lambert shader because this is the node that is taking the reflection and blending it on top of the grid. So let's take our cloud from here and plug it inside the reflect glossy node we'll have to increase our samples to 16 without doing any test renders we can see on the preview sphere here that it's taking a lot more time to render this plus we're not seeing any reflections for now we'll deal with the reflections now and we'll look at how to increase our speed later on the reason we don't have any reflections is because the way architectural materials deals with a glossy reflections and how the old system used in Mia we're going from 1 and downwards so 80.8 is actually 20 percent and our cloud materials have a color from gray to darker gray which is closer to almost 1 in this case so our diffuse value is so huge and we need to tone this back down 
And since the reflect glossy is a scalar node, we need a way. There is a node that is that changes the the range of scalar values. We plug this right in, and what we need to do is keep the old range from which is from zero to one, and give it a new range which is very small. We start from zero to zero, and see how this works. Right now we don't have any effects. If you go to point one, we're starting to see something here. We'll take it to point two, and point three. Right, so what, I what does the scalar change range node do? It takes an old, it takes a value in. We're keeping that range of that value from 0 to 1, as is. And we're basically cramping those to a new range. So instead of having a range that goes from 0 to 1, which means our biggest value will be 1, which is 100% diffuse, we're having it from 0 to point 0.3. Now, our rendering is extremely slow right now, and that's because our sampling rate is too big. Now, having a 16 value here inside the architectural media materials doesn't really affect the rendering too much. That's because it's optimized. Where Whenever there is a constant reflection, the glossy samples goes down to a smaller value and when there is a change of color, the glossy samples of 16 for instance will be used. That's why we'll, we see it extremely fast going on surfaces where there is no reflection or doesn't appear any reflection on and where it's slow where there is intersection of colors. On the other hand, the Lambert material, when we say 16, that value is going to be applied no matter where the, no matter where there is a reflection or not. So in order to have a reasonable amount of render time, which are small, usually three is a good number to go by. So this is the final look of our floor. The look is the desirable one we want for this kind of material. Of course, there are times when you want to use the default material of the architectural media material. And other times you would want to have this kind of predictability and control on your reflections, especially if you're trying to achieve a certain reflection color. The problem is, it took a lot of time to produce this. But in reality, when you start doing this kind of reflection, it becomes second nature and extremely fast.